Hey there YouTubers, I was talking very recently about my collaboration with Dr. Bob Fuller who in turn was um, a big fan of Robert Carplus. And Dr. Bob Fuller, no relation to Bucky Fuller, he had me out to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska one time and other times we met here in Portland, he came to the Pauling House and I went to a uh, AAPT conference thanks to him here in Portland. The thing that got us together I mentioned was the meme first person physics which I was promulgating on one of the discussion lists on which we overlapped and first person physics I didn't make clear in my first discussion also links to another Bucky Fuller idea which is that of energy slaves. Now what are we talking about there? This is a way of breaking the view actually that your standard of living depends on human slaves. That everything that's good in your life is somebody else had to work really hard. So if you see more people working less you're thinking well my standard of living must be threatened here because fewer people seem to be working what does that mean for me? I don't know like there's some zero sum game of some kind but with the energy that we have harnessed from the ecosystem say wind, coal, solar, nuclear I'll just throw them all in how many kilocalories of energy does each one of us consume? and by consume see that's a really problematic term because what do we mean by consume? do we mean as a biological entity? because then we're about 100 watt bulbs each of us and I like to say, ultimately, it doesn't matter, rich or poor, you know, how much you consume is 100 watt bulbs worth of energy. That's you personally, your body. But then, of course, yeah, but I jump in airplanes all the time. I'm driving around. The lifestyle, if you sort of make a circle around your lifestyle, that's highly variable in terms of how much energy is flowing through that. Uh, it's not related necessarily to quality of life. We don't have to go there exactly, but it is related to how many joules it would take, say, to pull your horseless carriage. How many horses would it take to pull your horseless carriage? In, in other words, your motor car. Getting in a big, heavy, two-ton vehicle and barreling at 70 miles an hour down the freeway, that's a lot of horses, hundreds of horses. And so at our disposal, thanks to the ecosystem and the harvesting thereof with hydropower, wind power, and so on, we have more energy at our disposal per capita than we used to. And that's another way to look at why we don't depend on other humans for all that power, because there's not enough of us and we're pretty weak anyway. We're not even close to horses in physical power. So energy slaves are not humans. They are a representation of how much a human could do in terms of work, in terms of physical work. Not in terms of playing chess, but in terms of setting up the chessboard, carving the chess pieces. How many people would it take for you to live your lifestyle if you just had humans doing it for you? The answer is it wouldn't. Ha there wouldn't be enough humans because, you know, humans, it's not practical. They could never pull your car at 70 miles an hour down the freeway, no matter how many of them there were, really. So it's really just a rule of thumb where you're thinking, you know, horses are pretty strong, humans are way less strong, but anytime we talk about horsepower, we could in principle talk about human power, but since those humans aren't around to do any of that work, it's all really being done by elevators and forklifts and buses and all this like inanimate stuff that we call machinery, for that reason, the energy slaves, we don't think of them as humans. We think of them as the grand total of automation working on our behalf. Non-human directed energy, doing things that we would call work because it advances our own goals. There's the physics notion of work that we have a goal in mind and only only energy expended in the attainment or pursuit of that goal counts as work 
Everything else is just wasted work or wasted energy. Work is accomplishment in a direction of a goal. That's kind of crept into physics as well. Whereas if there are no humans in the picture, there's no goals, we don't even, we have, we, we see energies being spent, but there's no, nowhere it's supposed to be. It's just, you know, stuff's happening. It doesn't matter what's happening, it's just stuff's happening. We might have a little more trouble with that concept of work, but the fact that we're spending energy, that's still obvious and measurable. And we could call that work too. In fact, if you just want to say energy equals work, i.e. expending energy or using energy is work no matter what's happening. Take the humans out of the picture. We don't have to worry about what they think work is. They're not critical. Well, then you start to get an idea of energy slaves. Because we all have a lot of energy slaves working for us, but maybe not always doing what we think they should be doing. Let's put it that way. In other words... It's not like um, a genie in a bottle where you just say, I wish this, I wish that, and all this humongous energy will just suddenly do our bidding. It might sound like that, but, you know, we have to, we have, timing is important. You know, you, if you wanted a bus to do your work of getting you from A to B, you have to be there on time to get the bus and so on. So you find out that your metaphysical or your intelligence, your metaphysical abilities are critical to leveraging the energy slave environment. But that's that's further than we need to go in this chapter. So I just wanted to make that link between Bob Fuller, Bucky Fuller, and first person physics, in which I became involved as well. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.